So this is uh, 2021, second uh, rifle season in Colorado, buck tag, uh, limited entry and draw. And had some friends that were coming out here to help me, looking forward to this thing all year long. It's a little bit uh, uh, of a redemption hunt because uh, the way last year went down in Montana and a few other places. So I was really looking forward to this hunt. Came out and did some scouting um, last weekend. Uh, found where some deer could be, found where some deer were, and uh, we were just looking to get out and away from our traditional places that we hunt here and do something a little bit different. Um, invited Kyle in this year, and Kyle is a guy that absolutely enjoys uh, hanging out and watching deer and stuff like that, so we would put him on a mountainside, and he would find deer and let us know and things like that. We'd talk about it when we get back here to camp and decide, and uh, Dan and I were the ones going out doing the walking and uh, trying to get on them. So here we are opening day. Alan doesn't know what the heck he wants. Just gonna go see what we see and uh, there's a deer that we saw the other day or I saw it of course I didn't get a great look at it and then looking at pictures on my phone that I took he might actually be unique he's not some super 200 point giant but I'm not looking for that I'm looking for cool and weird and ugly and that's what I want like me alrighty let's go see what's up there see you in a bit I could tell you a true story about Jared so you got it on film so Jared was about four years old. I'm driving my truck. Jared's in the middle and Janelle's right here. And I just happened to look down at my four-year-old son. Well, he's not my son yet, but I'm trying to figure out if I want this kid for the rest of his life. He's, I swear to you, three knuckles deep in his nose and just, he's, he's digging people. He's digging. Not a big deal. Everybody cleans their house. But what got me is as I'm driving, he pulls out. When he pulls his finger, you can see that booger stretching, stretching, and his head snaps right into his mouth. <laughs> I had to pull over. I was so disgusted. I was just... <laughs> Story I kept, time with Alan. I kept him. <laughs> He's a keeper. <laughs> Oh, his number two is weak. He lives. He's got a lift today from me. So, you want the whole morning, just part of the morning? <laughs> well, there we were, sitting in the dark. Heard, I don't know, something sounded like horns clashing. And so stepped out and walked a little bit. And I think we got some film of me sneaking in. Fortunately for once, I see deer before they see me. And then uh, when Dan came and joined me, we were trying to look at it. And then as we turned, there was a buck up on the hillside that had us freaking pegged. Um, couldn't see its antlers, anything like that. We looked at it, looked at it, tried to wait for it turns, but it stayed perfectly still. So I went back towards the truck trying to get it to move its head so that Dan could see it and tell me whether or not it was a shooter. But of course at the last minute I get to the truck, it turns and bounds away just enough for Dan to see that apparently it had some pretty deep forks and he was wider than the ears. Dan's pretty excited about that one. We did see the other three deer. Uh, they're all four by fours and uh, yeah, they're just pencily not quite what we want. We've seen quite a few deer got deer running all around us just not quite what I'm looking for I'm looking for freaky or huge so we'll go from there 
have a good one stay tuned <laughs> so I don't know I can't see any deer anywhere we've been up here all morning I mean we've heard a couple of shots I don't know where these people are seeing them they're so freaking hard to find it, what's amazing is deer they, they can hide behind a little twig or something and just yeah but that's why they call it hunting not getting you just can't find them everywhere uh, yeah we'll just I mean I got nine days I got plenty of time to find what I want having a good time with my friends and yeah <sighs> damn deer should we go to a new spot yeah this one's not good enough okay One, uh, we named him Pops. He had a big beer belly and passed on him the night before at uh, 500 yards, a little over 500. There was a little bit of a wind that I just didn't feel comfortable with it. And went back in the next day and uh, we found where he was and where he was feeding to and Dan and I got up on top. He's significantly bigger than that buck. He's pretty. There's my deer. The hunters were right in there somewhere. This crest. I don't want to get over it and get busted. But if we stay right here, they're going to come through and we might not see them.
here and slip the back off. found where he was and where he was feeding to and Dan and I got up on top and we got to a point where we didn't know where they were and we saw some deer on the other ridge over and we thought maybe that he had moved over to that. Take him if you're gonna... I don't think that's him. Fuck. Do you want to run out there? That's not the one I want, that's the only one. That's not him. It's that classic, take a couple steps and they were actually bedded 25 yards from us. So it felt pretty good that uh, we snuck in, in the sage country, into 25 yards of an old seasoned mule deer. Pretty happy with that. Um, sadly, the thing took off and I never got a shot on it. I had an opportunity, but again, I wasn't comfortable with the shot, so I didn't take it. Uh, we chased him over another ridge, watched him uh, go into an area where he just disappeared. And so uh, we got together with Kyle. Again, great behind the glass, great at finding deer. And we spent the afternoon just watching where we last saw him. And I think it was about probably three hours after we last saw him that uh, me stood up, just appeared. Um, there was another little buck bedded that we were watching thinking he might be around there. But yeah, and then he just stood right up and it was like magic. And then we had to put it together. So this is kind of neat. We spent the last three hours looking for pops. He's in that bit of aspens over there. So we found Pops. It took us a couple hours. Pretty long while. Dan saw him cross the private after they bumped him. They said that he came up about 25 yards from where they were. There was a forky. We looked in this patch of timber for ages. An hour and a half, two hours. Forky bedded right there. And then he finally stood up. So they just headed out to stock. So hopefully he doesn't see him right now. Because that would be some funny stuff. Oh, this might happen. All right.
see him. Take him if you can. There's another one behind him. Yeah, that's the park here. That's him looking at us. Yeah, on the right, right by the fence. He's still right there. His butt's to us. He's going up. Got him. You got him. He's going up the hill. Yeah, get ready. He's down. He's down. He's down. He's down. Stay on him. Please. On our side of the fence. He's done. Gunshot. Miss. Oh, he's not going to jump that fence. Oh, got him again. I see shiny right there. Yep. <sighs> What'd we do, Dan? I think we just made it happen. Third time's a charm. So I saw this buck last night and we had set up on him and we watched him for a little while. It would have been about a 530 yard shot and I just wasn't comfortable with it. And so decided to walk away and uh, we knew where he bedded and so we had a plan. I woke up this morning and decided that we wanted to go for this one. Um, he's not enormous but he's got some character which is what I'm looking for this year. And uh, so we came in and right off the bat we're coming across the ridge i don't know if we'll get this in the video but it's about four ridges over and we've got pinned by a doe and uh, a little buck then we worked our way back around trying to find where he was and eventually we got into a spot where took that one extra step and him and another buck got up about 25 yards away and when they got up they weren't wasting any time they were heading the other way so we ran down and over the ridge line, and then he was probably at about 200 yards at that point, but he was still moving and I didn't get a shot at him. So we went to that second point and they were gone. Uh, just couldn't figure out where they were. And so we sat there watching the hillside and eventually we spotted him way the hell away over here. And uh, he was on private and working his way across and he jumped the fence and he got onto public and then he just disappeared. Came all the way around, you can see the ridge behind me. Uh, there's some trees back there that we were set up on and eventually we we're watching the same spot that he disappeared uh, Dan was just determined that he had bedded down there I spotted a little buck that was bedded and then eventually they stood up and that's when we made the fun and uh, made a move on him he busted us coming down off of that hillside and then as we came up over this little knob back here over my right shoulder which I don't know if you can see or not about 300 yards away I got in behind a bush and he was walking towards a private. Uh, honestly, yes, I missed on the first shot, but it's not what you do with the first shot, it's how well you do with that follow-up. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got it done. Uh, 180 grain Nosler Acubon, freaking, it punched a big hole in him that we're trying to hide. We can't show it, it's actually, it's, it did some damage and I'm happy with it because he didn't go, he didn't go 20. <laughs> shot him at about 320 yards, he didn't go 20. And that's pretty much it. Thank God. I mean, shoot, this was the third time's a charm and lots of prayers as I was walking. And Dan had some good eyes and found them for me. And yeah, I'm happy. Kyle's in on this group too. I can't forget Kyle. 
Kyle's the one that, uh, I don't know, the guy's really smart. <laughs> he understands some deer behavior and uh, yeah, we found this one because it was a team effort. And this one here, we're calling him Pops because you'll see pictures of him. He's got a very big body. He looks like he's got a beer belly and he's a lot bigger than a lot of the other deer we've seen as far as body wise. Uh, so I'm actually really happy with this one. Victory whiskey. Cheers to a great hunt, good friends, incredible day. I really appreciate Dan and uh, Kyle for being here with me. Good friends, good people I enjoy hanging out with and uh, all my stupid adventures. Oh, oh, oh.